Don't get don't get me uh twisted up with a whole bunch of other stuff that's going on. Because number one I basically do me. I wake up blessed. I go to work. I do what I have to do. And when I'm finished, I come home to relax. I don't have a girlfriend. I don't have a wife. I don't need none of that with me at night. Why do I say that? Is because I don't need no company when I'm trying to relax. It's just me, a computer, a laptop, some water for tea with something to eat. No more sugar, no more soda, none of that. Clear head, clear mind, clear body makes you think better, makes you focus better, makes you realize that your life is more important than what you thought it was. So I cut out a lot of things over the years. I stopped drinking. I stopped smoking. I stopped dating. But I don't stop socializing with people. And more or less just give them advice, positive advice on doing the right thing. I don't promote gun violence. I don't promote gang violence. I would not tell anybody to pick up a gun to go shoot anybody. Because I wouldn't want no one to tell me to do that. Because I know that is wrong. That's the difference. I wouldn't tell someone, oh, go ahead, go smoke your brains out. Oh, go ahead, go drink your brains out. I wouldn't tell you that because... I wouldn't want it for me. So what do I look like telling somebody to do something like that for them? See the difference? I'm not going to tell a guy, yeah, go ahead, go go, go with that crazy woman. Try and make her your wife. She going to drive you up the wall. I'm going to say, nah, or is that what you want out of life? Is that the road that you want to take? I'm just telling you. My objective is I would not take that road. Sometimes love is not what it's supposed to be. Sometimes you love, you lose, but you learn a lesson. And you don't repeat the loss. You build from the loss. You remember what not to do wrong. And you follow the right path. See. People. (coughs) People always saying. Yeah. Oh gee. You don't know what you talking about. You talking. How they say the white man's uh, language. No. I'm talking the language of. Not being. Set up for failure. See, we have this big misconception. Remember when they came over to Africa and we had a religion and stuff, right? But all of a sudden, they captured a bunch of us. And just took us from parts of the world to parts of the world to parts of the world, right? So, we don't understand the language. So now they tell us what language 
we're supposed to understand. They tell us what books that they wrote, that they wrote, that they changed the words so we cannot understand and we was told not to read. We was told how to harvest, but we was told not to read. So, they preached what we thought was the correct words, the correct religion preferences to follow. But once we learned how to dissect the language, we understood that we were lied to. So now, here we are, centuries and centuries and centuries and centuries and centuries later. People of color. Remember, look what they did to the uh, indigenous people. They came over. <sighs> got all the men drunk. <coughs> and slaughtered them. <coughs> and took over the land. And gave it a new name, new name, called America. <coughs> I'm not a hundred percent. And what did these people do to deserve that? They didn't deserve that. We didn't deserve that either. But yet we still believed in their God. We still followed their rules. We took, every time we did something wrong, we took their beatings. Our women took their rapes. And what did we learn? Okay. So now they put it in the mindset. Hey. Let's, uh. Put them in the, tell them to join the gang. They join the little gang stuff. So, here we go. We have the gang culture. Where so-called the black youth can become unified in a sense. But, that only turned into being what was considered a criminal activity, a criminal enterprise, fueled by little wars. If you lived on one side of the street, you fought the kids on the other side of the street. And then y'all fought the kids around the corner but who wins you don't win because you're fighting you're killing each other over a specific color or an area or a block that you don't even own And you filtering your own community with drugs that's taking out your own family members. Crack, coke, dope, smack, 
but how are you trying to overcome those who have deceived you if you don't have the knowledge to attack them at the same game that they used on you? See, what we fail to understand is just because you're able to smoke marijuana, just because you're able to make a little rap song, doesn't mean that you have the total power to become equal to your oppressors. Because they own the most precious commodity. They own the land. You don't own the land. You rent from them. You buy from their stores. You purchase their food, you purchase their liquor, you purchase their perishable goods to sustain life. So <laughs> you can't stand on your own. So okay, they say, yeah, yeah, you can do your little gang stuff, but see, it's all a setup. They let you run the streets and run wild until you make the mistake of you killing somebody or you hurt somebody. And then where do they put you? They lock your behind up. So, when you say we shall overcome, you can't overcome because you're not educating this generation. If you're an old G, an elder statesman of the black and Latino community or the indigenous community, you're not supposed to be sitting there getting high with the generation of now. You're supposed to tell this generation you need to go to school to be a welder. You need to go to school to be a bus driver. You need to go to school so you can be in the service. You need to go to medical school. You don't need a gun. You don't need to get high. You don't need to get drunk. You need the acquired knowledge so you can survive and sustain on your own two feet. So you can be able to support yourself and build up enough capital to buy you a home. Not run around here buying all the drugs and <coughs> alcohol and buying up the bars and that's not it. That's not that's not life. And until this generation stops listening to the so-called OGs that are played out. But they still telling you to do the same dumb things that they did when they was your age. They're giving a recycle of the bad cycle that's going to recycle them. Back into the prison system. And until we teach them. To pick up a book. 
instead of picking up a blunt. It's just going to be the same ugly bloodbath that's been plaguing our community for years. The same people, different faces, will OD on drugs. The same type of kids with the same <laughs> crazy... I'm down with X, Y, Z, and A, B, C. I got to keep spinning the block because of my ops. It's going to be in all these different shootouts, waiting for someone to go to a birthday party, baby shower, family gathering, And you're going to post it all up on social media. You're going to post the fact that you got your guns, you got your, your weeds, you got your liquor. And where you going? So, somebody's going to be there waiting for you. We got to stop this. People my age, we got to try to stop this. If you're a true OG, you, you wouldn't be sitting there smoking with the next generation. You'd be telling them you don't need to be smoking. You need to be picking up a book and learning how to provide for yourself. And don't let no man steer you different. If they true OGs, they wouldn't be sitting there getting high with you. They'd be telling you to open up that book and learn it. So now you can be able to talk with the oppressor and mentally battle with the oppressor. See, we don't, we don't fight mentally with our oppressors we <laughs> subject ourselves to the easiest denominator to feel comfortable so we go sit in the corner and we go get high and we go, <laughs> go get drunk Maybe shoot off a couple of rounds. Because we feel good. <coughs> but is it progress? No, it's not. I'm 57. Knocking on 58. God willing. But I know by the time I die, we still going to be in the same boat. Of the same foolishness that will continue on. Because the blind lead the blind. Uh, who's going to actually open their eyes and see that the cycle continues? Our, our women too. Grandmothers, mothers, trying to work hard, fathers <laughs> trying to work hard. Not knowing <laughs> that the street is running their kids' life. They provide the roof over their head. And they're so exhausted trying to keep up with the bills. They can't keep track of what's going on 
with their children. I say like this. I pray every day that we don't lose another kid to the street. I pray every day that we don't know, lose another black female to some dirty rich person that wants them to come shake their behind in front of them for a couple of dollars. I pray that we have some more black lawyers. I pray that we have some more black doctors. I pray, pray that we have more pol black police officers, lawyers, train drivers, professors, engineers, judges, doctors, nurses, lawyers, plane operators, train operators, factory workers, food service preparers, restaurant owners, club owners. That's what I dream of. How we going to be black enterprise if we don't want to teach? How we going to be black enterprise if the generation don't want to learn how to do it? We have to teach them. Don't get high with them. Mentally bond with them on what's going on wrong. What path not to follow. I'm 57. I done seen it all in these 57 years. And we can't overcome until we get that monkey off our back. And that monkey is stop listening to these stupid old Jesus telling you to run around the street with guns shooting at each other. They need to shut up or tell you to pick up a book and learn something. Learn how to use your mind. Don't learn how to smoke. Don't learn how to shoot a gun. Learn how to use your mind. Learn how to make an income. So your parents don't have to spend all these money trying to send you to college. And then they, or they spend their whole life working trying to get you to get an education, a college education. And then you want to sit there and get high and throw up gang signs and all that stuff. That's not it. Education. Education is the key. Why do you think the Jewish people got all the law firms and everything? Because they sent their kids to school. Why do you think all the Chinese restaurants are open? Because they use the money that we so lazy by Chinese food with they sent all their kids to school to open up more restaurants. Look at the Irish. The Irish got all the chicken spots. Look at the liquor store. They make all the money. We buy, but we ain't got nothing. People of color got to change. You think everything is cute? It ain't cute. We ain't going forward. I think we still going backwards. Maybe 5% might be going forward. But the rest of us are just falling for whatever whatever they say. Hey, take this. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, master. Yes, sir, boss. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, sir, boss. We got to change it. People of color, I'm out.